I've always had the aspiration to play in the NFL when I first picked up a football and understood what was going on around me. I would always see the Cowboys on TV or see the Texans on TV and I'd be like, man, I, I, I want to play for them. That's who I want to play for. And, you know, a lot of my teachers, a lot of my friends, you know, would always say like, uh, NFL is a promise. Not a lot of people make it from where we're from. You need to have a plan B. Uh, what if you don't get to go to the NFL? And it was just like, that was never the answer for me. Like, I was just like, no, I'm going to the NFL. My plan B was just another plan to make plan A work. I think that he come out the womb ready to play football. He's from the most athletic family in the city of Orange. Uh, I played ba baseball, I played football, but got a scholarship to Wiley College in baseball. I wind up getting a scholarship at Wiley College to play volleyball and basketball. But I also wind up running track and playing softball. Uh, my mom was the high school superstar. My mom was the person that I had to live up to her legacy when I went to the high school, West Orange Stark. You know, just a lot of people was like, oh, your mom, she was a bad girl back in the day. She used to do this, she used to do that. I gotta go do better than my mama. And, you know, that was the goal. And my dad, you know, he played a little baseball um, in, in high school. You know, I didn't get the baseball trace. I wish I would have, you know. Those, those $30 million deals look real good, so. They were both athletic, you know, so I guess that's where I get it from. My niece, I think we wind up getting her registered for dance, ballet. Every day we would bring her, he would run out and start flipping and dancing with her. So it's like the dance instructor said, why don't you just sign him up? It was fun too. I used to jump off of trampolines and stuff. I used to do recitals, and I ain't ashamed of it. I ain't ashamed of it. I know she laughing, my mom and my dad laugh, so it is what it is. He kept the dance instructor. She was like, I just love him because, I mean, he's so enthused. It was just like, you know, he was meant to be there. I was good. And then, you know, it's time for me to go play some football, but uh, no one will ever see a picture of that. If you were a male child in our family, it was a must that you played football, whether you knew how to play or you didn't know how to play. You were gonna find yourself on that football field because that was the expectation uh, from everybody in our family. So he went and practiced with the flag team one day. I started crying because I saw all of my other friends and people that I had grew up with in the neighborhood we're playing tackle football and I was like, nah, I don't want to pull no flags. I want to go play with the big boys. So I was like four years old playing with kids that were like six and seven. He was a hard hitter. He knew the game at an early age. We had to play him at linebacker and he would shut the whole left end of the field down. He said, well, mom, I want to high jump. He said, I heard, did you high jump back up in high school? I said, yeah, I did. So, you know, when I get off of work, we'll go and we'll work on this mark. So, how to jump. You know, that was one, probably one of the meanest coaches I had. My um, mom, uh, it's just like, she would always tell me like, you need to do this, you need to tuck your butt. I'm like, mom, like, it was just every time when I would win, like she would just go on this rampage about what I didn't do. You didn't do this. And I'm like, mom, like, just in front of all my friends. And it's like, man. He didn't really know how good he really was in track until he just started advancing when he started winning a meet. He was already that, that type of child that whenever he put something in his head, he's gonna make it happen. He went and he jumped 6'6 six, six or 6'7 six, in state. He, he did it, I mean, off the wrong foot. It was raw talent getting me through a lot of stuff in track and then once I started working with Coach Chop, uh, he was just able to get my technique down. To be quite frank, he could do anything. Long jump, he could high jump, he could run the quarter. I, I think it helped him with his bursts, helped him with his agility, um, and I would probably say the high jump uh, uh, helped him learn how to high point the ball because, I mean, I mean, you have to be able to do that as a safety and as a receiver.
with a winning this program in the state of Texas. Uh, when he was here, we won over 30 something, nearly 40 games. So he was a big part of this, uh, our success here. Coach T was an old school, hard nosed coach, and he did things one way. And if you weren't doing it that one way, you were out of the locker room and he didn't care how good you were. His maturity back there as far as a sophomore seemed that of a senior because he was the only uh, underclassman in the secondary. Easy to coach, you didn't tell him but one time and he had it, so a very intelligent young man. He always played for the crowd. He would get the crowd in, his hands would go up in the air. Nobody in the crowd better be quiet when something was going on. He played for Orange. Everything that Deontay receives He's earned, and he's earned it the hard way, through hard work. My first offer was from Alabama, my sophomore year. It's my first junior day ever, like my first college visit ever. We, we didn't have much experience with the recruiting process at all, so we just thought that we were going to actually visit, visit the campus. So we get to Alabama, walk into the Mal Moore Athletic Center. So we're just sit, sitting in the room and we're listening to all the coaches talk. Like somebody from the intercom called my name and I'm just looking at my parents like, yo, like, what's going on? The guy said, well, Coach Saban wants to see you. And a few minutes later, we're sitting across from Coach Nick Saban. And um, we didn't know what to say. <laughs> this is the godfather of college football and we're sitting in his office and we're getting ready to have a conversation. I just see all these rings on the table and I'm like, whoa, like, I ain't got none of them. He liked my film and it just laid out the game plan for me as a student athlete at Alabama. You have a chance to get an education, have a chance to play and compete at the highest level and compete for national championships. It didn't dawn on us until we actually got up and walked out to get ready to tour the rest of the campus that he just offered you to play football for him. So we were walking to lunch uh, to, to the stadium and I walked up to him and I asked him, I was like, Coach Saban, did you offer me back in your room? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, I'm coming here. And that was that. The Bama is Bama. It had, it had great facilities. They had great facilities. The coaching staff is great. I mean, I felt like I was home when I went to the visit, and so I just decided to uh, pull the trigger and commit. Okay, you guys talk about Even though there were some people that doubted him, and started to call him Mr. Alabama, somewhat with a grain of salt at first. He used that thing and became Mr. Alabama. Being able to start on a Division I level, you can ask for much more. You know, at, at this type of university, 